another question we had was how, what are the achievements from the space station program or the previous experiences? How are you going to use that for the moon and Mars missions or, or for Mars long duration flights to Mars? How would you see that not changing too much? Uh, that's, that's exactly what we are doing right now because uh, of course flight to Mars uh, is going to be long duration flight. We don't have power, powerful enough engines to, to fly in, in short, short mission to, to Mars or Moon. We are going to, uh, to have way of uh, execution the program the way we do it on long duration flights. We are going to use our experience in designing a reliable life support and use this reliable life support uh, to long duration missions, missions outside of Earth or orbit. <clears throat> Especially when we wouldn't be able to send extra equipment, uh, repair equipment uh, from the ground, when uh, with communication delays we wouldn't be able to to send commands as easy and as quick as we do it on uh, Earth orbit. Mike, uh, well, how is the uh, experience of an astronaut um, used uh, in the context of the uh, planning or in the context of the conception of the future uh, Moon-Mars missions? Well, uh, between missions as, as a NASA astronaut anyway, we have um, a technical assignment which means that we sort of finish the debriefing and any public relations activities that we have and we, <clears throat> we start working really as a consultant. And so we have consultants on the shuttle program, the station program, and now the Constellation program. And um, like a consultant, we don't have very much decision-making authority uh, um, often, but uh, our input is taken into account because there's some relevance to the experience. And uh, I think it's been that way historically, really, since the very early days of uh, the Mercury program. And now the more experienced, the, the larger body of knowledge that we have, certainly we're taking those into account when we're designing the new vehicle. And we have uh, a very big participation in the Orion uh, capsule development, etc. And how is this uh, experience passed on from experienced astronaut to, uh, to future astronauts? How, how the astronauts are di discussing among themselves to get the experience flown from those who have uh, got the flight uh, experience and those who are about to have it? Satoshi. Well, well it, it's very nice to uh, listen to the uh, precious experience, experience of the astronauts there and uh, it, it helps a lot for us and uh, well plus uh, I mean it's, it seems to be that uh, by utilizing the space station very much uh, we can uh, increase the development of the next generation uh, spacecraft I mean for, for example uh, testing new materials under harsh space uh, environment is, is very good, so we can uh, test the new subjects. Or, uh, well, I mean, uh, plus in addition to that, uh, international cooperation is another big thing. So uh, these former, ex I, mean, uh, I mean, current experience will help us a lot in the future, I believe. How about um, you, Jean-François, you, you spent a lot of time uh, working on the uh, ATV, Automatic tra Transfer Vehicle Program. Uh, how, how was your, um, your input into that program with the uh, astronaut background? So I haven't flown on board ISS, but my fingerprints are on board since I was one of the last to touch and, and look inside before it was launched. Um, it, was a, it was a fantastic uh, teamwork. And I see, by having work on ATV and uh, with a cooperation between three, essentially mainly three space uh, powers at all level of the uh, decision making, uh, I see the ISS as a very successful test bed for international cooperation. And we had to go through that and find how to solve some uh, corpora corporation pro uh, problems be before we go together further 
because the station is close to the Earth. At any time, there is, if there is any uh, big emergency, the crew within a few hours is, is on Earth. But when a crew, when an international crew, I, I hope international, we go to Mars, uh, they will be committed to reach Mars before they can envisage to come back to Earth. They will not be able to decide at any time uh, we have an emergency, let's take the, uh, the rescue ship and, and go back. They won't see the Earth in the window and they won't be able to communicate with the ground. So I think the selection will probably be different, the training will be different, but the ISS is a fantastic tool for international cooperation, uh, and I see the science we do on board as an opportunity of this human spaceflight program. Uh, we, the science itself, I don't think, justified the whole program, but the science is, uh, community is very well using this opportunity uh, that we have to do a very good science uh, with weightlessness, uh, exposure to uh, space environment, and it's also a, a special platform to observe the sky or the earth because it's a, it's a privileged uh, location. Uh, and I, will, I would like to add a little bit to your uh, initial question about experience transfer. That's a very interesting subject, and in Russian program we used to fly uh, in every crew at least one experience cosmonaut, so during flight you, we have a capability in real time, in real flight, to, to transfer our experience. And we found that uh, it's very useful. It doesn't matter how much you trained on the ground, how, it doesn't matter how many hours you spend with instructors. In real flight, in real, uh, with experienced cosmonaut, you, you gain a lot of uh, new way of doing things. Uh, to know how to avoid uh, problems, to solve the problem if, if you need. And that's the, e the easiest uh, way to transfer experience. Uh, recently we had to use indirect transfer of experience and Sergei Volkov, who is flying right now on board the International Space Station, was in, uh, in the crew we were in the crew together, training as a backup mission for Expedition 7, then for Expedition 11. Uh, so even on the ground, when we were going through all training and uh, preparations to, to do experiments on board, uh, we, we really transfer our experience. And the last thing I want to mention is um, the way how we were training for ATV. Uh, we, we were in the team together, and uh, I think um, in instructors in European training center did a very smart thing. They invited experienced cosmonauts and astronauts, and they gave them a lesson, and then listened feed feedback. So, as Michael uh, mentioned, we, we work as advisors, and in this case, we were advisors for, for instructors. So instructors used to teach us how to do things, but sometimes we do vice versa. We teach instructors how to instruct new cosmonauts or astronauts. Yeah. It was very interesting to see how uh, European instructors have taken the best of the Russian training and the best of the US training to put it together. And this vehicle is fantastic because in only two weeks of training, the crew is declared good for uh, working with ATV in space. So it's a very... Uh, crew-friendly vehicle, and beyond the functions it was designed for, they have asked over the last few weeks to wash themselves inside a TV, to sleep inside the ATV. They love ATV, and they even do their gym in the ATV.